Hey guys, just got the HOV stickers. So, Chevy Vote Vlog number 24. How much time does HOV stickers save me? Los Angeles traffic is utterly horrendous. Whether you're taking the 10, 405, 5, 710, 105, 605, it really doesn't matter which freeway you use, it will have traffic. And your commute, whether it's 10 miles or 5 miles, will easily take 30 minutes. So, in LA, basically there are um, speed pass, express pass areas. So, same thing I think in Northern California too. Um, it basically hits the transponder and it will charge you anywhere from a couple, it's like 90 cents a mile or something like that. It's some um, per mile basis based on density and based on how slow the traffic is. They charge you more, I think. Uh, but more details are at that website. But usually in the morning time, it's about anywhere from two dollars if it's you know if it's very low traffic, all the way to about six or seven or eight dollars, depending on the amount of traffic and how slow the traffic is going, and if you want to drive you know single occupancy or double occupancy, you know having a, someone else you know sit next to you, or you know totally HOV I meaning it was three three people and up. I think that was the thing zero zero, which is you're just paying for the toll. Um, two, which is a reduced amount for the toll and HOV which is 3 plus during the peak hours uh, you, you get you know it's it's basically free for you with the transponder the transponder also has a monthly fee of like a dollar so even if you just buy the transponder for like 20 or I think it was like $30 plus $10 of um, credit you basically still get charged a dollar every month just for maintenance fees in the past it wasn't like that it was free uh, but I think they were they didn't have enough money to support it, so what they did was they charged everyone a dollar because not many people were using it. Um, long story short, how much time do it save for me? Let's go back to the original question. So, over the past you know week and a half, you know from 10 October 17th all the way to pretty much October 28th, you know I just basically kept a quick log as well as some video of it. So stay tuned. This will be cool. How much time does it save me? My commute is about 28 miles one way from a suburb in LA down to Long Beach, California on Interstate 10, then to the California 710 South. So with low or no traffic, it takes about 35 minutes. On a normal day with traffic, it could vary from one hour to more than an hour, like if there's an accident. You know, if last time I was in an accident, it took me about an hour and a half. Day one. I tried the HOV for the first time, yay, with my stickers. I had the um, single occupancy. I, pay, I pay, usually pay the toll if I'm late for a meeting, and I just basically pay it and just go. But oh, it is slightly better than the highway. You know, it is slightly better. Day two, October 18th. Sweet. Now that's what I'm talking about. Fast, fast. Ooh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, great. There's traffic going both ways, of course, again. Of course, there's no traffic at nighttime, so I could easily take. I just did it for the heck of it, it's just just for fun, and to see all the nice little reflective um, street street things, street um, reflectors. I just thought that was neat, and I figured I'd try it once at least. Day three, October nineteenth, same thing. You're about ten to twenty percent faster than everyone else in some spots, but once there's traffic, it's traffic both ways. You basically stop and go right when you merge with them, and as you can see, it's it's pretty slow and you're going about the same time as the people outside of the HOV lanes. But there are spurts where you're about 10 to 20% faster than everyone else. Day four, same thing. Day five, 10 October 21st. This is the first time the transponder didn't work. Um, my transponder is about, I don't know, a year or two old. Um, but yes, I basically had to click it a few times to make sure it did go back and switch back to the three-person um, switch and made sure it worked. So not sure they're going to charge me for this, but doesn't matter. I mean, usually, you know, when they when it doesn't see it, they send you a bill anyways. But once they see you have a transponder and you have a frequency of it, I, I think they really don't have it. But if I do see a bill or a fee with this uh, or fine, you know, I will let you guys know. Weekend drive, yay! This is what I usually spend my weekends doing. I drive up to Northern California and just going through the hills, the farm country, the beaches, just driving up the coast is really relaxing. And then just seeing big sky and big hills and 
just love the farmland and the drive. Um, that's what I normally put my miles on. It's just for recreational driving. Day six. The weekend's over. And it's starting to rain. It's going to be fun. Yep. Very, very fun because there's going to be traffic. LA drivers are, I don't know, they just don't understand how to drive in rain or something. But everyone slows down and everyone, you know, basically there's a lot of traffic accidents. Day seven. Same traffic with a little spurts of faster. And a little bit of issues. You can only exit, and this has been an issue, you know, from the 10 to the 710 transition. I hope you, if a DMV or or Caltrans listen to this video log, um, you know, I hope they do make some changes to it because, you know, one, it's very short to merge from the 710 to get to the 710 from the from the 10 freeway. You have to cut across several lanes just to go back to the 710 um, interchange. Or, not to change, but yeah, I guess that's the interchange. But of course, people merging this way slows down basically everyone else on the 10 freeway just to do this. I believe if they let people exit earlier, maybe it'd have a little less congestion further down the road. Um, but who knows, I'm not an engineer. I'm just you know, observing and from my videos and actually going through that. But I've seen other co-workers who live, you know, to take the same route, same thing. They have to cut across several lanes, going through stop and go traffic. Not exactly fun. Okay, bonus day. This is ten. Uh, this is October twenty-seven. The HOV lane was actually closed due to a police activity and SWAT teams. Yay! No, not really. Plus thirty something minutes to my commute. This was basically the entire that um, that freeway entry was blocked. So it was HOV lane. Well, I wish they would just let you know the HOV lane open, but it was blocked too, so even this poor soul, you know, you know, this Kia Soul electric vehicle wasn't able to use it uh, and had to use, use the regular freeway. Oh well. Day 28, or not 28, uh, October 28. Low traffic. Hey, this if this was normal, this would be awesome. <laughs> um, it's the weekend before, it's the Friday before um, Halloween, and I guess people either took the day off or something, but it is no traffic and it was a normal 40 minute commute to the office which is awesome so does HOV stickers help yes it does help given you know a few options you save a few minutes in between some of the stretches of high traffic routes you slow down for the traffic but then you spurt about a quarter mile or more and of traffic free zone and you're about 20%, 40% faster than everyone else until the next, you know, transition time or entry level to the to the HOV lanes. Overall, LA it does help. If you're in LA or if you're going from Orange County to to LA or going towards LA or going away from LA, it, it helps a little. It gives it helps, you know, I say twenty to thirty percent of your commute in some areas in time savings, but most of the time if it's heavily congested, you're impacted too. Because buses are in the HOV lane, other people or car pullers are in the HOV lane, as well as people who aren't supposed to be in the HOV lane, or maybe they are, I don't know. But, you know, some people are single people or in the single, they might be paying a toll or something, but even though it's highly congested, they might have just either way came through anyways. We don't know that. I think it's an honor system. But who knows? Um, there are people policing it, but I haven't seen too much of them, other than the occasional motorcycle cop. Uh, that motorcycle um, police officer who basically drives through every so often and also those transponder checkpoints. But with more people getting into HOV stickers, it might just really slow down and it will definitely, you know, depends on your route. You know, I could probably use uh, Waze or something and go around the HOV areas. Will I save time? Maybe. I think I'll probably, it probably still won't be as fast as using an HOV sticker. But, um, if I use local or cut across local areas, I have pretty much similar results than to using an HOV. But of course, you know, you get people, you get tours of the weirdest places. You ways put you go. You basically go to different neighborhoods, and sometimes the neighborhoods don't really like you know seeing a lot of people driving through the neighborhood, which is eh, oh well. So, how has getting an HOV sticker affected your commute? You know, let me know. You know. Basically, did it help? Did it get worse? Are you in LA? Are you in Northern California? Are you 
in another state that actually has HOV stickers. I'm not sure which one does, but I'm sure other states have the same uh, benefits or incentives, you know, for driving electric or driving uh, plug-in electric. So let me know in your comments below. And of course, you know, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and please subscribe and stay tuned. Sterling, signing off. Thank you. Bye.